Uh, so, uh, today's going to be about eyes. <laughs> and uh, I have, a, you know, quite a selection here for us to look at. Um, they all seem to be suffering from something similar. Uh, and I'll talk about the eye socket uh, and then just really dedicate some time to this eye socket of, uh, of life right here. So I'm going to talk about it. It's something that I talk about a lot. It's something I refer to, how well an artist develops their eye socket line um, and uh, how I kind of look toward that um, when I'm trying to uh, determine the skill of a student. So uh, I'm going to talk about how to, you know, actually fire on all cylinders when it comes to that eye socket. Uh, before I do, um, if, if for some reason you don't know how to join and submit your work for critique, you have to click on the little Google Plus icon on Um The store is also where you can grab a copy of Portrait Studio. Um, you can grab my brushes. Everything is available there as well. I don't talk about this enough. So uh, Google Plus to click click to get there and then there is Patreon if anyone's interested in supporting me on Patreon you still have some time left um, our next Patreon stream will be the 7th so you have two weeks to complete the animation study that I've assigned for this month um, uh, and yeah uh, so that's for available for you guys um, I think it's like a yeah it'll be like you know two weeks three weeks I'll try to extend it if I feel like you know because it's quite an extensive study I might just do the uh, instead of doing one stream at the start of every month, I might do it in the half of every month. That way, you guys get more time for this study at least. Uh, but it just goes right back to a month in between for the rest of the studies. But I don't know. I'll talk to you guys about it. Um, okay, so let's jump in. The eye socket. What is it? Um, so the eye socket is the little bit of skin. Sometimes it's not there, depending on the kind of eye you're drawing. But this is the eyeball. Okay. And this is the bone structure of the, let's say, the eye socket. Let's just choose one section. Or sometimes, sometimes it's squared. Or let's say all of this is just whole. The eyeball would actually fit in just fine. But let's just pretend the eyeball is a little bit smaller for this case, okay? All right, so this is the skull. The eyeball should fit in. The eyeball actually extends outside. It actually just fits right in. Only some of it sticks out. Not not all the time. So everyone is different. Some people have eyes that are that are um, extended, eyes that are uh, deep set. But the eye socket is this really really fine line of skin getting caught in between the eyeball and the brow bone. And if you don't know how to render this, you pretty much just you just this is supposed to be a fist doing down. <laughs> This is a thumb. <laughs> um, so the so what the fuck? So uh, that looks so wrong. So what happens is that you guys forget the gradual radial shading happening from outside down uh, into the eye socket line. You guys forget the actual line in this area. You guys forget the cast shadow of the brow bone on the eyeball, and you guys forget that the eyeball is circular before anything, obviously. You have to watch my previous videos. Forget the eye socket for now. Just try to, if you don't know how to draw an eye at all, try to get the circular shape out. A lot of you don't have that. But the eye socket is just this, this just like epidemic happening right now with the way you guys draw eye sockets, and I haven't spent enough time talking about that. It's a very, very specific thing nobody really talks about, uh, but that's why I'm here. So what you have to do is get that radial shade, make sure that the deepest, darkest part of the crease is in the area where it is the most high area of the sphere of the eyeball is um, aligned. So where, where that aligns, the circular symmetry line of the eyeball and the symmetry line of the eye socket, this is where it gets deepest and hardest because everything else kind of dips back down into the skull and this is the out, outward most part pinching the most skin all right so this pinches the most skin write this down the symmetry line of the eyeball pinches the most skin in an eye socket line sometimes the eyes are hooded and they have a lot of fat drooping and they kind of droop e equally all around but it's not really equally because always eyeballs will always be circular this is something you can trust eyeballs will always be circular an eyeball will always be a ball if it's different, if for some reason a human comes in with an oval shaped or triangular shaped or deformed eyeball, they can't see. They won't be able to function. Their eye socket does not function because it's not a complete joint. Um, so when anyone has trouble rendering eyes and they're kind of maxed out, 
what they render, it's because one, you may not have a circular eyeball, but most likely because your socket line game is weak and you don't, that's so stupid, I hate saying shit like that, but you, you, you don't represent this, this, this really, really detailed, a heavy, like, a uh, heavy skill set, kind of like it's really demanding of your, of your attention to detail, this little eye socket system here. So let's move into corrections. So that's the lesson. I'm going to apply that to all these, and hopefully each one is a different manifestation of a of this lesson. So the most important thing is the radial shading that leads down into the eye socket. But you have to first represent that the eyeball sticks out. So you got some blocking to do. Um, the blocking in this case is for the upper eyelid. All right, we need to lay down a nice healthy block right here. All right, a nice cast shadow or core shadow for the eyeball. At this point, I'm not drawing any eyelids. I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about getting the eye socket shadow, the core shadow, the shadows on either side of the eye. And you see how your line here is equivalently uh, sharp. This edge here is sharp all around. That needs to go. So get that smudger and smudge away those edges there. Another big thing is this random ass shadow that you've used to look. What the fuck is this? I'm so sorry. I get a little passionate about it. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, Gordon Ramsay moment. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have the exact same personality type. I don't, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, so right over here, what you have to do is lay in a little bit of a, like a, a plate of light just underneath. That's the relief moment that leaves the eye socket. So the eye socket extends only as far as it is a cavity. When it starts to curve back up into the light, that's when it starts getting some relief values. So bringing shadows down here is a complete break of the of the, of the, the physics behind all this. Then you have the fact that it's a close-up and you got this muddy ass skin all around. You need to get rid of that. Focus on one section at a time. Um, Alright, so I'm just gonna close all this. Alright, and uh, just quick mentions. Uh, uh, you, too much, too many lines. Too many lines for the eyebrow. Just, just take it easy. All right, another nice block above the eyebrow. All right, and all the shadow you have here is just—it's not it's just a rainbow of death. It's not really any any, you know, it's not representing any drops or variety in bone structure or contour. This whole area has a bonier kind of hill of bone right around here. And this is the real depression. This is the real hole of the eye socket right here. This right here. Everyone grab, take off your glasses. If you have them on. Take your finger and put it right here under your inner eyebrow. That's the deepest, darkest part of your whole eye. And kind of just get, get your hand and just put it over your eye. There's, there's a part in this inner corner right here that your hand can't touch. Your hand pretty much touches every other part except this little hole. See that? You actually don't make contact with this deep cavity. That's the darkest, deepest part of the eye. So that should be what you have as darkest or what you're blocking in. There are other, let me put my glasses back. There are other um, kind of like uh, little uh, relief from the edge, kind of like not really a crease, but almost on the inner eye right here. There's a part right over here. And what happens here is that there's a little outline of light. So I'm setting up really, really basic plate over here. And you see how I'm preserving the cast shadow here. I mean, the, the, uh, the edge over here, I'm preserving that. All right. Let me get rid of this. And then all at once, I'm just going to make everything way less muddy. Like, everything is really muddy right now. All your values are misrepresented. I'm just going to make everything way less muddy. A lot more milky starting out. So here it is. Here's the big deal. Cast shadow and core shadow of the crease of the eye. Pay attention. Before I do this, I'm going to... Son of a... 
filter liquify. I'm just gonna tuck in the corner so the eye looks less anime. And I'm gonna use this here. Inner the eyeball itself is separate from the inner corner of the eye. I'm gonna open up the eye a little bit. Alright. Okay. Radial shading, pay attention. Low opacity, high feed. Brush number one. Number two, shrinking as I go along. Number three, number four. And then we erase. This is where you guys stop. You guys don't actually erase. You need to erase. I got a hard round brush and I'm just erasing. All right, it's okay. It's gross, it's messy. That's fine, but this, this is what the eye socket does. It does not do it all the way around, so that's why we gotta go back and clean out the areas where the eye is padded. Right. It's not equally hard all around. That's technically what I'm always trying to look for when it comes to students' work. It's not perfectly uh, a, a gradient either, or a radial shade down, kinda gets a little bit tucked in. And then right after that, we have a climb in values that are brighter as we go along. We also radially apply these. So we actually end up getting a real socket. Sometimes this socket, because there's fat, and because of, of, you know, it's not perfectly circular all the time because of the way the face is shaped, sometimes we have more of a droop. But again, it's always sharpest and darkest where there is that center line of the eyeball, all right? Then there's the cast shadow, another little tricky guy. So darken, grabbing this value right here, and throwing over a cast shadow. This cast shadow is the actual cast shadow of the brow bone on the eyeball. A small little little elusive Pokemon, but it's there. And then just throwing that in. Okay, so the eyelid isn't actually as bright as you guys think because it's it's a lot more hidden, a lot more hooded than uh, under that brow bone. And this is what you're doing outside of reference. There will be a time when you have reference and all that you're doing when you're studying is learning how to read this when it's time to read it. Right, you're learning how to read this. When it's time to work with a reference, you'll know how to see it. Sometimes we have a bit of a, a bump over here. All right, lower eyelid, same deal, except the lower eyelid isn't really a deep crease. It can be a crease, but again, not every eye has it, so it's best to just learn for when every eye does have it, for every, uh, for both upper and lower have this crease. Not every eye has both upper and lower is what I mean. So I'm just erasing here, and then smudging the inner and outer. Alright, so see how we're sculpting? The face is emerging. There's that really, really important cast shadow. And then the uh, lash line. This is a very, very basic eye. Where you were before is you were really just guessing your way through. You were hoping that it would look okay. You were kind of hiding away with random values, anything that you didn't know how to draw. The eye is the most advanced function, advanced thing in the entire body. I mean, apart from circulatory, respiratory system, I'm not talking about that. The things we draw on the outside, the eye is the most advanced thing to draw and is the most difficult thing to draw because there's just so much going on, so many components you have to keep and then uh, line. The brow bone gets blocked upward and then blend it away. Alright. 
Sometimes the whole cast shadow of the brow bone will come down like that. It just depends on the kind of eyes that you're drawing. I have a little bit of a spur of light on the inner corner. Carry this guy back up. Sometimes we have shadows just under the eye. Healthy amount of dark spot and I'm just going to uh, decrease the size of the eyelid, the lower eyelid. When you do that, you know, equal sized upper and lower eyelids, the eyes tend to look very, very sleepy and lazy and kind of derpy. So try to keep the lower eyelid smaller in surface area. Okay, so this little eye socket. This eye socket can go even further. What do they say in Inception? Let's go further or let's go, let's go, let's go, just do some more dumb stuff. So, opacity is low, 100% feed, and going in one more time with the darkest darks, thinking about the line. So eventually the eye socket looks like a line. And that's kind of one of the only times you have a line other than the lash line. It's like whatever is in formation and line formation. And then I'm being very, very careful with this. And then uh, just smudging away. And it's not a perfect circle. So when we look at, um, let me find some of my own references. Um, so let me find some good ones. Um, so this character right here. So her, she has very hooded eyes, and her she has a lot of fat that leads, like, kind of like hoods over the eyeball. So her shape of her eyes is perfectly circular. See those traces of perfect circle, but the top is shaved off a little bit because the eyes droop down and cut it off. But we still have it because the light is so strong and it's such high contrast. We're getting a complete line. We see that gradual rate, uh, shade moving down into the line. So what you're doing with a study like we just did is you're preparing yourself so you can read this when it happens and actually pull it off. Um, this isn't a great study. It's a bit advanced because it's setting you up for a really, really thick lash line. And a, and a beginner will actually make this even thicker than it needs to be because they just love thick lash lines. Um, let's find something else. Okay, hers is a little bit more mild. It's a very, very bad photo. But again, radial shade moving down. Eye line because she's kind of looking up. And then we have the light of the, of the, of the brows, I mean of the, of the eye socket. Let's find another one. This one is very, very prominent. She has a deep set eye that's kind of hooded. But again, radial shade moving up. So whenever I see an artist interpreting this properly, the cast shadow is there, the upper eyelid is a sliver. Um, they've captured the, the climb into the highlights under the brows. I know that this artist can read creases and can read angles and can understand the two types of edges. And when an artist speaks like this, they absolutely know how to read a simple edge around a shoulder line or a chin or around a nose. The eye socket is a big deal. It's, it leaves behind traces of, of your skill set. So here, there's no eye socket at all. Um, there's no, there's not much like blending that represents um, varieties and edges. You have just straight up edges, or, or you don't have edges that turn into to blends. You either have an edge, or you have a, a mush of, of light and stuff. You do have a climb towards the brow bone, so you definitely saw that. Uh, what you have to start doing is. You can't emit the, um, the inner and outer corners of the eye. Those need to be there because they kind of indirectly make the eye cir look circular just by drawing them because you're drawing the two edges. The lower eyelid in this case might be a bit more visible and then there's the whole upper eyelid that's just missing. And if you want if you were working from a reference and you wanted to make it a hooded eye, I, even a hooded eye I'd say is too advanced for a beginner. Do some basic, just like what we just did together, really, really basic, uh, low poly head type eye sockets and eyeballs. Uh, you're going to be setting yourself up for being able to read any customization. So you have to learn, know how to build the, the core build. 
you have to understand the core build wall that might be expected the variety of um, combinations that might be expected uh, that you might come across um, you know how to do that in a template and then when it's time to customize you have a reference to guide you and if you do enough you can customize without needing a reference but right after those basic form study type uh, eyeballs and uh, eye socket studies you jump into something a little bit more advanced so there's no eye socket line completely there's no edge if you were using a reference it's hard to even see that you were kind of feels like you were doing a lot of this without reference so this is another way to do the eye socket kind of just laying down a, this is what I would do in traditional just smudge away and keep smudging the muddy colors, high contrast, this all has to go. Right. Super, super high contrast. It's just, it's eyeshadow at this point. It, it, it never gets this dark. A lower eyelid needs to be lighter towards the inside, darker towards the outside. And then we've got the block for the upper eyelid. Already it's starting to look a lot better. If, if, I mean, if you can get here within a week, you're good. If after today's class, your eyeball starts to look more like this, we've made progress. Okay. As for the pupils, so pupil, 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 pupil. So what I say, an iris. So what I say is learn how to draw the basic Asaro type structure or base structure of the eyeball and the eyelid surrounding it. And really, the pupil and the iris mm, serve no functional or mechanical change or purpose on the outside of the eye. Outside of the eyeball, the pupils have no effect. The eyeball, of course, has an effect on the way the face looks. If you don't have an eyeball, your eye socket is sunken, sunken in. So you actually start to physically look like you're missing something. And if you don't have a pupil and iris, obviously, but someone can have a a pupil and an iris not be able to see but they still have a pupil and an iris it's a complete eye so functionally on externally you don't need to worry about the presence of this of the iris and the pupil if you're studying the eye this is me telling the world stop drawing in the iris and the pupil if you're a beginner because though it may make your study look half decent and presentable and you may get compliments from mama and pop you you will, it will not actually help you improve all right so if you want to you know stop lying to yourself about how how well you can draw an eye get rid of the iris and the pupil so that you can actually address what you cannot draw you can actually see what it is that you're missing and focus more on the general function the sphere within the eye socket the bone structure of the eye socket the skin and its folds and the way it gets caught in between the sphere and the eye socket um, and it's just so much is going on that you have to render edges that taper off into soft gradients um, values that climb radially into highlights uh, wetness oil um, inner and outer corners um, uh, then eventually colors iris and pupil will simply get in your way I don't look to the iris having a million little sparkles in it and anime crap and oversized irises um, that look like contacts. I don't look to that. That's not what makes me favorite something. That's not what makes me istabrak uh, favorite anything or, or compliment it or save it. It's not the big iris. It's the eye structure, the bone around the eyeball, the skin around the eyeball, the values, the, ca the cast shadows, how well they captured them. If the eye looks like it can blink or not, that's what makes me favorite something. And that's what other, um, I'm not saying I'm advanced, but that's what other professionals might do as well with your work. And if you are too busy and too focused on stylization, you will not spend time actually addressing the anatomy of that area. It is the most advanced area in the face. It is the most complex area in the face. So please stop drawing the iris and the pupil. If you don't know what I'm talking about and how useless the iris and the pupil are, um, go to my video history and search big irises or large irises. Um, I've, I, I just go through like four or five drawings where the irises are too big. I shrink them and things just look better right away. The iris is always oversized anyway with the way you guys draw it. You guys need to step back from this obsession with irises. It's, it's really, it looks noob. It doesn't look good. It looks newbie. And um, yeah, you guys need to stop doing it. All right. So... Uh, let me move on. Okay, 
so in this case, now we have a reference. So this should be interesting. In the reference, we kind of are missing an eye socket line. And the eye socket line is right there. Everybody close, squint your eyes. It travels right around here in a very particular trend. So what it's doing is exactly this. Wait a second. All right, this is what it's doing. And the reason why yours is not seeing it, squint your eyes, you'll see it's right there. Look at the navigator, it's right there at the fine line. She's looking down, which is why the eye socket isn't there to crease. So this is really interesting, actually, to see what the student can do. And what you didn't do is climb radially for the upper eyelid. You didn't capture this edge. There is an edge. Oh, yeah, there's an edge. Look at the navigator. It's right there. And then you didn't climb radially to the highest fattest point of the eyeball right over there. There is more of a crease for the lower eyelid because she's looking down. Right, and there's that little wing inward. And then you can just go back and add in those wrinkles as you need to. Right, just radially, of course. Right, and then she does have a bit of a hood, so that's kind of how things get tricky for you. But you, you missed this. It was there, but you missed it. Maybe because you've been zooming up the entire time. Maybe because you haven't uh, done enough radial studies, so you haven't ca caught it. Maybe because you are one of those artists that doesn't see the eye socket. For some people, this is an actual blind spot. Like a lot of artists, a lot of students don't actually see the eye socket. It's very unfortunate. You're blending the, uh, you're not blending the eyebrow enough. The eyebrow doesn't feel like it's growing out. I get it. Your reference kind of threw you off because it's got a, uh, it's got a, what am I saying? Hair. And then now I'm just adding line thick lash line as usual students always add a thicker lash lash line than they need to don't know why they just do even though your reference right there is telling you it actually works when we don't have a thicker lash line students do it anyway All right, another big thing students forget when it comes to the iris is to blur the edges. Look how blurred these edges are. The irises aren't cut and paste. And if there is a shadow, it's a very faint shadow. And then there's one really general shadow for half the eyeball. Just kind of like sitting there in the corner. And then we'll take a look at the before and after. Okay, so a lot of the shape, the spherical shape of the eyeball is missing from underneath the skin. See that excessive shadow of the, of the thickness of the lash line? The eyebrows are a little bit too sharp. And then we come to this one. So this one has a really sharp line all the way around so I would actually suggest getting a smudge brush and just doing everything that is not this area instantly that'll look better and over here as well irises are way too big man like way too big You have a cast shadow coming off the brow bone, but no cast shadow coming off the eye socket. Okay, so please don't forget about that eye crease. 
It's really, really important. The eyes you're drawing here are a little bit too um, representational, not, not re non representational, they're a little bit abstract, cartoony, almost abstract. Please blend the inner eyebrow so it looks like it's actually growing hair. The shape of the eyebrow is also very cartoony. And just because we took information away, we took edges away, it looks better. So, yes, edge work is amazing and wonderful, and studying polys is amazing, but you have to follow up with, bl with blending. So before, it looks very stale. After, it looks a lot more skin-like. By stale, I just mean like, like a kind of vector drawing. Okay, any questions at all about eye, eye sockets and that whole business? I actually want to do one more little, little kind of like make one more case for smaller irises. A lot of you are, are really suffering with your struggle, with your style struggle, st style struggle, and I and I see students that suffer still from the style struggle as refugees. I see you guys as honestly suffering. You're in like this war zone, and you're. Like it's a full-on suffering and uh, it's going to limit the way you draw, it's going to limit the way you study, it's going to change your opinion about your art if you're too busy trying to recreate what some other half good artist successfully managed to accidentally create. Um, it, it, it's You guys are choosing the wrong uh, idols, you guys are using the wrong kind of kind of mindset and I see you guys as refugees, I see you as like you know, kind of lost. You have all, you have the desire to, to change your lifestyle. You have the desire to move in the right direction. But eyes are the, the biggest victims of, uh, of style. Uh, eyes are the way they, you know, the students struggle the most with style. You can get away with realistic nose and lips, but eyes is where, is where everything happens. So when you have all this left to do, all this studying left to do, and you're you're busy trying to figure out your style you're gonna fail and you're not gonna get good that's that's all I'm gonna say you're you're, it's, it's, you're gonna fail meaning your 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 gallery will look the same for another three years five years your art will always be that you know mundane or half good if you're busy grooming a style you have no skill or no business trying to groom and it leads you to drawing irises the size of the moon for no goddamn reason because, you know, everything else in the eye isn't looking good. So might as well make the irises huge to capture some attention and get the, aw, that's so cute. That's such a cute drawing. Oh, it's so beautiful. Remember that they're not complimenting your skill set as beautiful. They're commenting, complimenting the large eye as beautiful. You can't always get compliments like that. You can't always be just complimented on the basics um, of beauty. You have to be able to draw someone who isn't completely Barbie. You have to learn how to draw humans eventually. So this pupil right now, I mean the whole eye shape itself is just a little bit strong. But I'm just going to shrink the pupil and choose a spot for it. That's not small at all. But it's, it's something for now. Right. The reason why she's looking shocked is because you actually have way too little eyelid space. She looks like she's looking up or is looking shocked. Right. Shrink the window of the eye between the two eyelids. I think you're painting a darker skin, but it really wouldn't be that dark. But I can't talk about contrast all at the same time. But um, the skin you're painting is way too muddy and way too dark. Even for a dark African skin tone, they're just brown. It's not black, like not fully black. As for your sketches, um, yeah, it's fun to sketch like this to see what you can do. But have some working lines underneath so that you can build some kind of, you know, uh, system for how you're approaching your lines or how clean you're keeping your lines. 
because I know Ink King is all amazing and glamorous, and everyone wants to be Kim Jong Il or whatever his name is, Kim Jong Kim Jong whatever. Um, but uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, it, it, you know, it, it, you can't you can't pull that off. Sure, he has lots of studies behind him. I'm sure he has some sort of way of seeing his working lines uh, without actually drawing them. So please stop stop trying to duplicate what he can do and not having any working lines. Your sketches are looking really, really rough, really chicken scratch. So this is typically the size of the iris that I would allow, that I would love to see in your work. This is the size of the iris. What you had before was a little freakish, and when you're hiding more of the whites of the eyes, you're showing more of actual, like actual alien anatomy. Like you're actually designing a humanoid that is not, you know, fully fully human that has some kind of evil to it because when you hide the whites of the eyes you are doing so in design uh, deliberately so that you can remove some of the humanity or some of the uh, familiarity in the character so this looks more like a freakish kind of getting possessed almost getting possessed kind of bloodshot eye and it just does not look professional so now we have all these really nice medium gray tones get your full black and throw in the iris the iris can be big. The iris can be dilated. Oh, shit. Alright, so that's the center right there. I'm gonna blur that. And uh, grab my little line there. Darken the lash line a bit. So these are dark spots. Darken this line. I'd go in there actually and make it even more tapered so we're smudging half the line. So it's not so, so much an eye tutorial day, it's about the eye socket and about you know the problems students have when trying to represent it they don't actually represent a functional eyeball in an eye socket. They have all these line-dependent, symbolic ways of representing something. And you guys need to draw, stop drawing symbolically. So you don't actually get cre humans anymore, you get creatures, or half-in, half-out realism, which is just a, a, it's like poor man's art, you know, it's not really going to be ever in at, at, at a level that can, you know, be idolized or at a level that can be called professional or sought after. Sorry, those are my bangles. Right, so before, after. Please work on this. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this artist right here, I wanted to just give them props. They're on their day eight of their 14-day challenge. The face is already looking so human. They have some wonderful features. You are value sharing just a little bit. So careful shadows. Don't just go on slides in the play playground and just slide down. Shadows stop where there is no light. Where there is light. Shadows occur where there is no light. What? Where there is light, there are no shadows. <laughs> All right, so you might want to work on the way you're rendering the nose over here and how uh, shadow dependent that might be. This little dark spot connects into the light, unless you're drawing someone who actually looks sick. And there is a little kind of outline of hard skin around the inner corner of the eye. Okay, so this is some amazing work beautiful face. I feel like I know them. And look at their eye socket. Do you see what I mean? The more advanced the artist is, the more they're able to translate what's actually happening in the eye socket. It's a direct kind of like artifact you can pick up to assess the skill set of an artist. Because it's such a finite area to have detail and edges. And edges manifest on all scales, on all levels. And the artist still sees it. So when someone says you have an eye for detail, this is pretty much what you know we're talking about. So I'm smudging the eyebrows a bit. 
You're kind of using like a thin brush over and over and over and over and over again for the eyebrows. Don't do that anymore. Um, the whites of the eyes are a little dim. I recommend you make them a bit wider. You are starting to accidentally paint a, a sick character. You can have those dark spots under the eyes there, just don't make them so dark. This is an actual prop we use. We use. The highlights of the nose are actually starting to read as highlights. They're not really secondary bounds, so be careful with that. Don't let that read as anything it's not. And then um, you got no light on the chin. The chin isn't that far off from the light. And your dark spots circle, circle the whole corner of the mouth. It only just really takes care of the top. Okay, so it actually looks like one lip is on top of the other. You have the dark spot on all axes of the dark of the, of the corner of the mouth it looks like they ate chocolate really messily like they really like chocolate putting in some light on the upper lip it's like a snout kind of just catches some light and you don't have some of the most important core shadows and highlights for the lips which are cylinders you have one just like that, sitting on the top half of the lip. And one just like that for the bottom. For the bottom lip, just like that. Okay, so we're actually sculpting the lips. And if you feel like, hey, you know, we just threw a bunch of light on the top lip, it's starting to look a little bit invisible, that's fine. You can get it back by bringing in a highlight around the cupid's bow. That's typically how we kind of get that form back. Because that's how lips without lipstick on look. They don't have a lot of color on them. Okay. And then there's the shine of the lower lip. You're kind of using too much contrast. Take it easy with your contrast. and then blending away at the chin. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful work. If the socket is getting that much shadow, the lower eyelid might also get a little bit of a shadow on it. And again, the darks of the eyes are too dark. They look a little bloodshot. I mean, the whites of the eyes, sorry. So I'm just going to throw in some light. Erase away at the uh, pupils. And then erase away around. So before, after, just a little bit more awake. And you can, if you want to, get back the halfway shadow of the upper eyelids. Looks a lot more awake, a lot less bloodshot or tired. You can even make it this bright. Okay? It looks so bright. That's actually the right amount of bright you need. But it looks so bright compared to what you had before because that's how dark what you had before was. All right, so merge down. So this is your next level. Be careful with that bounce light on the chin. You're kind of interrupting the core shadow. Be careful with that on the jawline. Before, after, more sculpting. You know, this was more of like a like if somebody brought in makeup and just put it on the inner corner and just let it slide down type of deal. Wasn't what the, actu the corner actually does. The lips feel more three-dimensional. We actually use geometric anatomy to render them. Okay, so any questions at all? Let me scroll up, see if any questions. If you have any questions, at Um 
What are you? Stupid question. Stupid sandwich. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think the personality type between me and Gordon Ramsay is the ENTJ, the commander, <laughs> which which makes a lot of sense to me. Don't shoot until you see the whites of her eyes. <laughs> exactly, that's the saying. Don't shoot until you see the white of their eyes. Ex that's the saying. There we go. Too dark, whites of the eyes look bloodshot. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Flatten the image. Good job. Keep it up. Careful with the temples. They're a little dark. And uh, I believe that's it. Yeah. So if anyone has any submissions responding to today's class, so if anybody has any, um, you know, uh, drawings of their own where they've tried the eye socket, they've tried to look through it and they want to submit it, you can do so on Google+. Plus. Click on that, join, um, and read through. I will be posting a... a um, a poll very soon regarding our next challenge. Again, I'm very, very busy. The summers are really, really busy nowadays, so uh, I might not have one for you that's complete until maybe end of August or mid-August. End of this month is not a possibility because we're already at the more than halfway, uh, but uh, middle August or end of August, I might be able to leave you guys before I go on vacation for like four or five days. I might be able to leave you guys with a challenge for you to work on. Um, and I might upload a poll very, very soon. And for anyone interested in Patreon or supporting me on Patreon, you may do so at patreon.com slash Um uh, You have the option of just as a watcher to support. My aim is a thousand patrons. Um, or if you want an education category, it goes as high as The Apprentice, which is $20 a month. Um, and you get all kinds of, um, uh, I guess rewards that we let's just call that and uh, so you get all kinds of rewards and you get access to a discord uh, where we have you know written critiques for each other a discussion and a private stream and the assignments for that stream at the end of every month so if anyone's interested in that you may do so here um, and that's it thank you everyone to get a copy of my brushes or anything like that they're all available in the store I will see you guys on Thursday the 19th hopefully by then the poll is up and we can talk about the poll. I can talk about my ideas for this upcoming challenge and uh, figure all that out. I have actually been streaming after hours a lot, but after hours are a little bit early before my private session, so around 1 o'clock. Um, I might stream again tonight. I'll pro I promise I'll try. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, but I might stream again tonight to finish some of my Patreon content. So if anyone's interested in coming um, and watching me paint Pablo Escobar, <laughs> um, the Netflix version, uh, I might stream tonight on the after hours. Uh, the after hours, if you don't know how to find all that stuff, um, you can just go onto my YouTube channel and it'll tell you if there are any streams up right now. So see, there's a live now, and there's another live now. I don't know why there. I don't know why there's two live nows. I think YouTube offers one, and then there's the one I just put up. But yeah, there's a live. There's a live now, and you can you can check if it is. I, I don't know if when I go live, you guys get notices. I don't know. But if you don't get notices, there must be a. It's not, it's not there in my version, but there must be a, a bell here somewhere that you guys can turn on. If you don't have the bell, I'm really not sure what to do apart from that. Um, I'm not sure how it works as a subscriber. Uh, but good luck uh, with all your homework, good luck with um, your eye studies if anyone is doing them, and uh, if you have any notes, post them on the class notes category, um, and I will probably reward some people for the end of the month uh, for their note-taking skills. So thank you everyone for watching. Bye!